We've had some incredible games already released this year, but we still have plenty of RPGs scheduled for the rest of 2024. This is your RPG Buyer's Guide for the remainder of 2024. Welcome back to Shinky JRPGs. We've had an absolute stellar year of RPGs already out in 2024, with bangers like Persona 3 Reload, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. But the rest of the year is still absolutely stacked with highly anticipated RPGs. Let's talk about all of the games scheduled for 2024, but before we start, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and tell me what RPGs are you looking forward to for the rest of the year. Anyways, it's time to get into your RPG Buyer's Guide for the latter half of 2024. The Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak, released today, July 5th, for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC, at a price of $59.99 US, or a limited edition through NIS America's website for $99.99 US, which appears to be sold out currently. Trails Through Daybreak is the 11th game in Falcom's Trails or Kiseki series. The Trails series has become such a household name over the last 20 years and gained immense popularity, and Daybreak is looking to be the best one yet. Not only is it a turn-based RPG, but it also includes an action-based battle system too. Not only that, but it's a much more mature Trails game. If you found previous Trails games too happy-go-lucky, then this might actually be the one for you. If you're still unsure about this one, I actually covered the demo previously, so perhaps check that out after you're done here. This is definitely a game worth looking out for, so what are you waiting for? Make sure to grab your copy and experience Calvert in all of its glory. Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus, to be released on July 25th on Nintendo Switch for $49.99 US. Previously released on PlayStation 4 and PC, Tokyo Xanadu is like if Falcom's Trails and Ease series had a beautiful baby. The best way I can explain this game is if Ease had Trails or Persona's relationship in school system. Originally, Tokyo Xanadu was released on the PS Vita, but the improved EX Plus version of it expands the game with new playable characters, new difficulties, better balanced difficulties, and additional story sequences. If Portable is how you like to play your action RPGs, then picking up Tokyo Xanadu on the Switch might be the way to go for you. From what I've played of the original Tokyo Xanadu, I had a really good time with it myself, and it was an interesting take on the action RPG genre. Besides, it's another Nihon Falcom game, which means it's going to have an absolutely killer soundtrack. And if you're a regular on my channel, you know how much I adore Falcom soundtracks. That alone is a reason enough to consider this game. One Piece Odyssey, scheduled to be released on July 26 for the Nintendo Switch at a price of $49.99 US. Previously released in 2023 for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC, one Piece Odyssey is a turn-based RPG based on the incredibly popular anime and manga of the same name. From my understanding, this game takes place in a new arc separate from the anime, allowing anyone to jump in. Sure, it would help to know the background of the characters, but it's accessible for anyone to play. So if you aren't a big anime fan like myself, you can still enjoy One Piece Odyssey. One Piece Odyssey features a weapon or element triangle system, somewhat similar to Fire Emblem, so there's a bit of strategy to the gameplay. I've heard only good things about this game, and more RPGs for the Switch is only a good thing. One Piece Odyssey is also composed by one of my favorite composers of all time, Matoi Sakuraba from Valkyrie Profile, Tales, and Golden Sun fame. Sakuraba's music always gets me so hyped, especially his battle themes. Cat Quest 3, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, Switch, and PC for $29.99 US dollars. Have you played any of the Cat Quest games? They are deceptively fun, and incredibly adorable. Cat Quest 3 is a top-down action RPG and dungeon crawler. The gameplay is simple. You have your RPG elements, damage numbers, equipment, leveling up, and all that jazz. The series kind of feels like Diablo if Diablo was made for people that just want a lighthearted and fun game. I really love how the indie scene is on the rise because it allows games like this to come to fruition. 
I like my AAA titles, but sometimes they just start to feel a bit stale and don't experiment like a lot of the indie titles do. Huge props to all of you indie developers out there. You're keeping the industry fresh and unique, really just out there rocking and rolling. I'm looking forward to this game when it comes out this summer. Visions of Mana to be released August 29th for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC for a price of $59.99 US. I am calling it now, this is going to be released for the new Nintendo system as well. Visions of Mana is easily my most anticipated release of the summer. I love the Mana series, I've been playing it since the original Final Fantasy Adventure on the Game Boy. Of course, back then I didn't know it was Mana, but I've come to love the series. Sure, the Mana series has kind of lost its way, Donna Mana, Heroes of Mana, I'm looking straight at you. But Visions of Mana seems like it's a return to form, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Speaking of Mana, I have been working on a Road to Visions of Mana series, so be sure to check that out if you'd like to see reviews of each of the four mainland Mana titles. I'll throw a link to the playlist in the video description below. That being said, I can't wait for Visions of Mana, I'm all excited just thinking about it. Persona 3 Reload Episode Aegis Part of the expansion pass for Persona 3 Reload being released on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC for $34.99 US. Also available through Xbox Game Pass. This was a bit of a hot button issue when it got announced. When Persona 3 Reload was released, it was confirmed to not include the FES content from the PlayStation 2 release. And then after release, it was announced that Episode Aegis, which was in the FES release as the answer, would be released as part of an expansion pass for an additional cost. Honestly, I feel like this should have been included from the get-go, or maybe even as free DLC, but I guess that's just how things roll these days. I'm not sure what to think about Episode Aegis, but I do remember that the answer was incredibly frustrating on the PlayStation 2. I'm hoping that they balance the gameplay just a little bit. I still have horror stories of constantly getting hit by Hama and Mudo instant death spells over and over like I owed the money. That being said, I still need to play through Persona 3 Reload. Kind of a surprise because Persona 3 is my favorite of all the Persona titles. Oh well, in due time Shinky, in due time. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom Scheduled to be released on September 26th for the Nintendo Switch at a price of $59.99? I'm assuming. I can't find anywhere with a pre-order for this game outside of the Nintendo Store. I have some mixed feelings myself about this game. On one hand, I adore top-down Zelda games. Well, I won't say Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are bad games, because they're not. In fact, they're absolutely amazing games, but they just aren't for me. I'm a classic Zelda fan. I like my top-down Zelda titles, Link to the Past, Oracle of Ages, Link's Awakening. It's just amazing. Though, when I saw how this game played, the first thing I thought was, I hope I can echo a sword and play this like a normal Zelda title. That being said, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited for Echoes of Wisdom. I love the toy style from the Link's Awakening remake, and this just looks like a great way to rethink of how you're going to play a Zelda game. Definitely going to be a day one purchase for me. Reynatus, scheduled to be released on September 27th for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC for $59.99 US. Or there is a collector's edition for $99.99 US on NIS America's website. Reynatus, I'm kind of mixed about right now, honestly. On one hand, this game looks absolutely gorgeous. Amazing graphics, the trailer music was fantastic, and I love the dark theme that it exudes. However, on the other hand, I feel like every time I get excited for a game by Furio, I end up regretting it. If you've been around and remember my Cry Machina review, and how that was a full-on roast-a-thon because I felt personally attacked after how excited I got for it, I think I'm willing to give them another shot, because there's just something about this game that just looks different. I love my cyberpunky, futuristic feeling RPGs, and this looks great. I'm getting my hopes up, so please, store my faith in your games, I'm begging you, I really want this game to be good, it has some mad potential. Master Detective Archives Ring Code Plus, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 5, Xbox, and Steam on October 1st for $59.99 US. The non-plus version was previously released in 2023 as a Switch exclusive, 
Master Detective Archives is a visual novel done by the same developers of Danganronpa, which is easily one of the best visual novels to ever exist. I'll be honest, I picked this game up at launch, incredibly hyped for it, but never got around to playing it. It came out around the same time I went on vacation, which was shortly before I ended up moving, so it kind of got thrown into the backlog. I'm pretty bad with that to be honest. Anyways, Rain Code is a fantasy mystery adventure game, which is why I was so enthralled with it. I love my murder mysteries, and if you add a fantasy element to it, I'm down to party. The Plus version adds 4K compatibility and improved performance, a gallery mode to watch previously viewed cinematics and background music, as well as all previously released DLC being included with this release. Maybe once this Plus version comes out, I'll finally play it? I'm excited to solve a mystery with that familiar art style looking fine, as always. Are you enjoying this video so far? Have you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel yet? If not, you should really consider it. I do JRPG lists and reviews every week, so you'll never be short on JRPG content. Come on, you know you won't regret it! Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred is an expansion for Diablo 4 to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC at $39.99 for the Standard Expansion, $59.99 for the Deluxe Expansion, or $89.99 for the Ultimate Expansion. Or, if you don't have Diablo 4 yet, you can get a bundle of the base game Diablo 4 plus the standard expansion for $69.99. All prices in US. Each expansion has more mounts, equipment, and in-game currency, as well as premium battle pass tokens. Honestly, I've enjoyed Diablo, but I haven't gotten Diablo 4 myself at this point. Not only do I not have the time for it, I just don't like the idea of having a premium battle pass in a game that's already fully priced. Though I will say Diablo 4 and its expansion does look very good, and if you're into looters, this looks to be an absolute blast. Diablo 4 has had a bit of a rough start from what I hear, but the game has improved substantially since launch. Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time, to be released for Nintendo Switch on October 10th at what I am assuming is a price of $59.99 US? Again, I couldn't find any pre-orders for the game anywhere to confirm that price. Fantasy Life I The Girl Who Steals Time is a role-playing town simulation game, and is the sequel or successor to the 3DS game of the same name. Being another cozy game, this is another one of those take-it-or-leave-it games. There are plenty of people who love and adore the cozy style games like Animal Crossing or Story of Seasons, and for others, they just aren't into it. I definitely want to see more about this game, and I will probably pick it up because I can find myself enjoying a town simulation RPG every now and then, and this one looks fantastic so far. Metaphor Refantasio, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC on October 11th for $69.99 US, or there's a collector's edition for $149.99 US. Oh, I am absolutely excited for this one. Metaphor Refantasio is Atlas's newest IP with the creators from Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5 working on it. And on top of that, it has the one mechanic I cannot resist. A job system. Like, oh my god, I am so excited for this. Metaphor looks absolutely gorgeous, and is another one of my most hyped games for 2024 so far. The worlds look so good, the combat system is incredibly smooth, and just the whole aesthetic of the game is just so... Ugh, I can't wait. This is already a day one buy for me. I don't even need to see any more about this game. Just give it to me, Atlas. I need it now. Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven is scheduled to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC on October 24th for $49.99 US. And can I just say, I'm surprised this isn't coming out on iOS and Android because every Saga game, even the most recent one, Emerald Beyond, is always released on mobile. Anyways, when I saw this trailer, I got excited. I thought we were getting a remaster of Saga Frontier 2, but no, instead it's a fully remade version of Romancing Saga 2. The remake of the first Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song, looked good, but if that game was a 10, this is skyrocketed up to 15. You hear about glow-ups, but this is a whole other level. Revenge of the Seven, besides having an absolutely awesome subtitle, looks freaking fantastic. Now, I find Saga games very complex, but I hear the Romancing Saga titles are easier to get into than the original three games. 
I know I'm probably going to struggle with this because, well, it's a saga title. But you know what? I'm going to do my darndest because I am so excited for this game. Mario & Luigi Brotherhood, scheduled to be released for Nintendo Switch on November 7th for $59.99 US. Okay, I'll be honest, I've never finished a Mario & Luigi game. I love Super Mario RPG, and I love Paper Mario, but for some reason, I just can't bring myself to finish any of the Mario & Luigi games, despite owning every single one of them. Which is a shame, because I hear they are peak Mario RPG experiences. Just from the trailer, I could tell this is going to be great. And from my understanding, they are bringing in people who work for the now defunct Alpha Dream, who worked on the original Mario & Luigi games, so you know it's going to have that magic that the old games had. I see people clamoring over these games all the time, so I think it's about time I give one of these games a shot. What do you think? Time to break out the 3DS and enjoy the remake of Superstar Saga? Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC on November 14th for $59.99 US. I screamed! I screamed when this game was shown at the Nintendo Direct. I have been following this non-stop since the announcement at the 35th anniversary event that was thrown by Square Enix in 2021. Dragon Quest 3 is my favorite game of the Erdrick trilogy, and I've been impatiently waiting to see more information on this. Not only that, we are also getting HD2D remakes of Dragon Quest 1 and 2 as well in 2025. It's such a good time to be a Dragon Quest fan, though I will say, I know that the legend of Kira Toriyama is no longer with us, may he rest in peace. However, I don't know who did the box art for Dragon Quest 3 HD, but it's such a nice homage to Toriyama's art style. It gives me faith that the series won't depart from what I've grown up with for the last almost 40 years. Dragon Quest 3 HD is going to be a huge experience once it releases on November 14th. So just a heads up for the rest of the video, the rest of these games in the list do not have concrete release dates. Currently they are all slated for release in 2024, but nothing specific yet. But with that being said, let's talk about Deca Police. Deca Police, scheduled for release on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Switch in 2024. Deca Police is another game that I've been following since its initial announcement. Level 5 is just one of those companies that turns everything it touches into gold. Dark Cloud, Rogue Galaxy, Dragon Quest VIII, they're all amazing games. I have no doubts that Deca Police is going to be any different. The art style of Deca Police looks absolutely fantastic. I love how bright and vibrant it is, even though it seems to take place at night. The gameplay is supposedly very Ace Attorney-like as well, which is another positive as far as I'm concerned. I hope we get a release date for this game soon because it looks like a game of the year contender from everything I've heard about. Maybe we'll hear something about Deca Police at Tokyo Game Show later on this year. Fairy Tale 2, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, and PC in 2024. Fairy Tale has gone through a bit of a transformation. While the first game was a strategy turn-based RPG hybrid, Fairy Tale 2 now is an action RPG. It seems almost like a smaller scale warrior style title. The first Fairy Tale game by Koei Tecmo was not bad by any means, it was just incredibly repetitive and incredibly easy. It also succumbed to what I like to call Koei Tecmo Syndrome. There were parts of the game that were very clearly removed from the game solely to nickel and dime the consumer with DLC. Costumes and half of the character cast were locked behind the season pass at a very exorbitant price. I believe the season pass for the first game cost a full $59.99 US in order to unlock everything in the game. And even then, I think there were some things that you had to purchase outside of the season pass. It's quite disappointing. I get DLC, but that was a bit sad. Anyways, with that being said, I'm still looking forward to Fairy Tale 2. Fairy Tale is one of the few mangas I really enjoy, alongside Full Metal Alchemist, which we need another game for we haven't seen in a while, and Death Note. So I'm sure I'll enjoy this regardless. Fantasian Neo Dimension, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox, Switch, and PC in 2024. Finally, freed from the jail cell that is the Apple Arcade. Previously, Fantasian was only available through the subscription service known as Apple Arcade. Think Game Pass, but only available on Apple devices and for mobile games. Fantasian also had an absolutely ridiculous difficulty spike in part 2 of the game. 
most likely a tactic in order to keep people subscribed to Apple Arcade for several months. Thankfully, Neo Dimension fixes this by offering a normal mode. Imagine that. You get a re-release of a game, and it's so difficult that they're like, you know what, don't worry, we're giving you an easy mode. Anyways, that's good, so that you don't have to spend weeks upon months grinding for levels. Fantasian is another day one buy for me, especially considering it brings back the glory that is Hironobu Sakaguchi. You know, the story writer of the original Final Fantasy games. Tell me you're as excited as I am about that. I have so much faith in this game, and I can't wait to hear an official release date. Sky Ocean's Wings for Hire, scheduled for release on PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC in 2024. What's that? You want a spiritual successor for Skies of Arcadia? Well, I think this is the closest we're going to get. Just look at that art style, and that ship combat. It looks like it's Skies of Arcadia in everything but name, maybe a bit of Panzer Dragoon thrown in as well. This is an indie game I am absolutely excited for. I am drawn to bright colors and great music, and Sky Oceans seems to have both. There isn't a huge amount of information for this game, but after looking at the trailer, it looks incredible. Turn-based role-playing combat at its finest? There's also a demo on Steam for it too, if you want to give it a shot. Make sure to wishlist the game too. It really helps indie developers like Octeto Studios get more visibility. Gosh, I'm so in love with this art style. It gives me 90s cartoon vibes. I can't wait to play this game. And last but not least, Ease 10 Nordics, scheduled to be released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and PC in 2024. At the time of recording, no release date has been announced yet. However, today there is the Anime Expo Nice America event, so we might get a release date there. Whoa, transition. Okay, future Shinky here, it is now currently 12 hours before my video is supposed to go live and NIS America decided, hey, we're going to announce a release date now. So this game actually has a release date. East 10 is scheduled now for October 25th, 2024. So yay, we actually have a release date now. But anyways, back to the video. I love turn-based RPGs. That isn't a surprise. But when it comes to action, Ease is the best there is. This is the 10th main entry into the franchise. And I've played about 15 to 20 hours of the Japanese import. East 10 is up there as one of my favorite East titles of all time. And I can't wait for the localization. While East Memory of Salsetta, East 8, and East 9 were all fantastic games in their own right, they had one glaring issue that East 10 fixes the weapon type system. Previously, each enemy had a weakness and a resistance to a type of attack, be it slash, pierce, or blunt. Thankfully, that system is gone now. I really hope that we do get a release date soon, because I'm impatient and I need more Adol in my life. And while we're on the topic of Adol, East 10's main gimmick is ship naval battles. Who is a genius that thought giving Adol control of a ship was a good idea? That man sinks ships like it's a side hustle. Worst idea Falcom has ever had for real. I can't wait to sink all of the ships. So there you have it, 20 RPGs scheduled for 2024 to keep your eyes on. I'm sure I probably missed a few, but what are ones you're looking forward to? Don't be afraid to bring up games I might have missed. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I'd love for you to stick around a while. Anyways, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video. So as always, have a wonderful day. Super Retro.